on our previous city commission meeting to order at 8.02 a.m. Pretty short agenda, but um, still wanted to meet some things uh, city manager wants to discuss with us and see if there's anything we need to discuss. So, of course, consent agenda, approval of minutes from uh, 7 11 23. Just ask you to review those minutes if there's anything that's been changed. If so, just let things go in. Any concerns about the uh, truck 90 that surplus and authorized option? All right, so consent agenda is good. And uh, really just new business, first reading of this is only the first reading 1156. Right, yeah, that's and we've talked about this a couple times. The uh, law changed this year where it used to be you could be 14 to drive a golf cart, and our ordinance reflected that effective October 1. Um, you need to have a learner's permit or driver's license, or if you're over 18, it could just be a, any sort of government issued ID. So the law changed, so this ordinance just brings us current with the law, and we're going to make this ordinance effective October 1 as well. Um, but we want to go ahead and have it adopted. Um, just to kind of educate the public in the meantime, and then mm -hmm. that'll kick in October 1. And we will spend some time doing that before. So um, learner's yeah. permit, 15. Yeah, a valid learner's permit, or yeah, which you have to be 15, or a driver's license. And then if you're 18, you can still drive one without a driver's license if you have a government issued photo ID. <coughs> to show 15 proof 15 of learner. the age? Is that the purpose of that? Yes, yeah, so. he needed your license. Yes, yeah, that was my question too. I was mm -hmm. just curious. What's that? When you get a learner permit, you usually can drive in the daytime with the both of them. Um, permitted. We didn't change anything else. I think it's still sunrise to sunset. Yeah. So that's always been that's always been the law. Um, so that that's not changing. So it's still sunrise to sunset. Okay. Any other questions on that? Okay, just a couple of things. Um, workshops. Um, I sent you out some dates for uh, the late workshops, and I just needed to, to kind of validate all of that. I know, um, you know, Mayor, Mayor was going to give us some um, feedback on whether or not those dates were worth the, the workshops that we talked about in the conference meeting actually doing two, one in the morning for people who, you know, moms and el elderly that want to come out and listen, and then one at night, maybe for people who are just getting off work. So that works really good. Um, that day has been set for August 7th. Um, I don't think I heard from everybody, so I just need to make sure before the end of whether or not that will change. That's for your utility rates. And that's the utility rates, yes. Yeah, I did get a chance to listen in to, um, I think we won and I listened into the last one, uh, finance review. So it was, you know, a good discussion. And of course, um, you know, they make a recommendation, but it's us as a commission to determine how we move forward with that. Something needs to be done. So it certainly doesn't need to leave it as a lame duck, but, you know, for us to sort of put in place what we, you know, think should be done moving forward as it relates to utility rates. We do have stormwater workshops coming up. So stormwater workshop um, every year, these are needed, um, <clears throat> whether rates change or not, just so you gave us some direction. <clears throat> Last year that we wanted to go and look at vacant land, how we could reduce that. And so um, Stan Tech did work to um, reduce the vacant land fee down some, and um, also added another tier that may make up for some of the revenue items on the vacant land side. Um, <clears throat> so that workshop will be Tuesday at 4 30. I'll probably come out and um, listen in. Um, that workshop is just a workshop to give you heads up. And then, Kevin, after that, we go into where there's some required um, notices and required times we have to put it on the agenda. Right. So, August, for August 7th as well. No, no that, that'll be that, that's before be. our commission meeting. Before so. the commission meeting. Right. And so basically, they've, they've got their, I call it a rate study, they call it a workbook, okay. but it's basically their methodologies and adding that to your so cutting the vacant fee. So, so they'll need to explain that study to you guys yeah. and get some direction. The meeting will be at 5. 5 30. 5 30. 
for the workshop at 4 30. Right. Right. but yeah get some if you remember when we put this in place two years ago they did their study we do an initial resolution so that'll be a public hearing um where we basically um adopt those methodologies set up a preliminary role and then authorize notices to go one published notice and then mailed notice um and then you come back as long as it's before september 15th to do your final adoption last year we didn't we only did the one resolution because we didn't have any rate changes so all we had to do was adopt that final rule last year because we didn't change anything so this year if there's going to be changes we need to go back like we did two years ago and, and um you know notice those changes and, and explain it and, and the notice that gets mailed out it won't just be hey the hearing's going to be september 13th it'll be here's what the changes are and the hearing can be september 13th so yeah. it should be something that explains um, to the public uh, what's going on and so this workshop on tuesday will kind of give you a first look about um the different methodology that they took and and making sure that they um <clears throat> rates the fees were more accurate they did spend a lot of time um with the um, tax office making sure that those um, numbers for those uh, parcels were correct and that was probably our biggest thing um the first year we implemented this is that a lot of the uh impervious uh, square feet of that was in incorrect or citizen didn't know how it was being calculated so one of the things we asked them to do is go back and meet with the property appraiser and get all of that information and make sure that that is updated and they did verify with us that they did that and then they're going to explain to on tuesday how they are calculating so because a lot of times when you look at what the the square footage is of a house and then you look at that little a preliminary um, box drawing of the house down there the square footages are different and so they're going to explain that this year as well uh, so that people can understand is there going to be time for mr lightfoot to tell us what's in the pipe for stormwater projects so we can i think she'll she'll do that in her because she is taken from our capital plan okay yeah okay. yeah so she'll she'll do that okay okay you know, here's to have a lot more to do we've done a lot we've done a lot a lot of it has been through grants so it's, it's enabled chris to do a lot of maintenance um and uh, a lot of things in house and so we just will continue on this path and i think one of the things to keep in mind also is uh when we adopted the stormwater assessment uh, uh you know that we knew that it would that we should be incrementally increasing it over time because we're still trying to make sure that's a self-sufficient fund. Because right now, stormwater has been borrowing from you know another fund, so uh, so that's part of it as well. And we can't continue the projects progressively as much as we've been able to do without you know the tax without the stormwater assessment. Mm -hmm. um, and so as we look at that on Tuesday, just sort of keep that in mind that the the decision a couple of years ago. Um, was to try to put something in place so that it would become self-sufficient so we would stop borrowing from the other funds you know to to fund that uh, to fund that fund so and the so, city has been very diligent for what you've seen going at grants fixing some of these major similar issues so that has helped with this as well um and so i think combination of those and some water we can continue to come up continue on this path, please. One thing to keep in mind too, so like Ms. Vicki said, they've been working very closely with the property appraisers, um, all of us, but we are at their mercy for whatever they, mm -hmm. they provide. That's exactly. So if somebody, you know, has a pool or a big patio or something that puts them into the next tier and the county has not picked them up, then we don't get the information. Mm -hmm. So I want to get out ahead of that. We had a, a few people come in last year, you know, talk about that they should have been paying more. Um, not too many people do that, but there, <laughs> there were some that said they should be paying more, they should be in a higher tier. Uh, and the only way that we could control that is if we hired a person to go out and inspect every parcel in the Haven. By the time we do that, we're not 
making up the difference of what we're losing um, by the salary, benefits, truck, fuel, everything for that. So, yes, there will be some discrepancies in a few, but there's not enough to make a difference by us hiring our own person to do the property inspections. Yeah. But I'm sure that's going to come up yeah. again. Just yeah. kind of want to get out ahead of that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and it will. Um, we were very pleased with the fact that, that they did, um, from here from residents, did go back and follow our instructions and sit down with the property appraiser and go through, gosh, know how many they went through it was it was we sent out letters last time i are going to send out letters again when the tears change to all the residents that yeah that that's will be yeah. after right so yes. like last year we didn't have to because we didn't change rates right so we just put it on the trim right yeah that we asked them to put on the trim at least the date of mm, we need to look at that no, we'll, okay we'll look at that. It's, yeah, I don't think we'll if you get something on the trim that has a date of a hearing just ignore it because we're gonna it's gonna be september 13th whenever we adopt our budget that will be the day of the final adoption okay um but yes in that letter it'll explain mm -hmm. the tiers whatever changes yeah, there so are that's what and it will notify the public of the date of the year so you want to know that day yeah, so yeah. Can... <laughs> the letters hit the, yeah, hit yeah. the mailbox we that's will when we, we get will, the calls we will yeah. definitely i'll be out of town then. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you just keep in mind that tuesday's meeting is not it's a workshop so we're not voting it's not on the agenda so we're not voting to adopt Mm -hmm. anything that they're presenting to us on Tuesday. It's just a word job. So, and then um, after that, we will hear from all of our uh, residents and constituents about, you know, their thoughts about it. That'll give some time to do that mm -hmm. as well. Have we had any complaints after the, the rainstorms that we've had? Because I hadn't nope. gotten any. Nope. No, no, we didn't get any calls. Um, okay. Last Saturday, we had the in the mm -hmm. afternoon. Yeah. Um, no calls. And um, Mitchell, he actually drove around Saturday yeah. evening, checked yeah. out a few things like the problem areas, yeah. and there weren't any, any standing water issues. So I did get a complaint in Mold Highlands. <laughs> um, so I, I was out, I was out there yes, was it yesterday? Um, <clears throat> so it's the Wednesday. I was out a couple hours Wednesday dealing that complaint. So I told him I would pass it on to you. Is it the new subdivision plan or? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I got a video of that. And so the complaint now is that the yeah, the, creek. The, the retention pond is filling up and it's causing, it's letting out of the actual drains that are on the road, which is the pushing the water down the street again into Dundee. So. Thank you. But a lot of our problem areas that we've had before in the past, mm -hmm. um, you know, Bel Air has been a big one. Uh, some of the you know, pine forests and that it is, it is gone from um, very a lot of phone calls to no. Been up a great job, stormwater. I remember a couple of years ago it was. Awesome. You remember that? We have a rain. lot of phone calls. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I'm finished. September now. when we have that. Right. See, the attorney, is there anything coming down the pipe we need to be aware of from um, from the legal side of things in regards to new laws that are being implemented? Well, there's some, but nothing. Yeah, you know, no action items or ordinances right now that we need to. You know, the the state they change some stuff with with annexations and having to do studies, but that's on involuntary, which we don't. I mean, we can do, we just don't. I mean, if anybody wants to annex in, it's on a voluntary basis, so the the changes don't really apply to that and then we're looking at um some stuff on like business impact of, of new laws so there's there'll be some some stuff coming down but nothing earth shattering right now got it all right okay. I, commission. yeah i have a couple um i've had several complaints about garbage rates increasing now, where have they gotten the impression that we're increasing garbage trips? Because we're not. No. We're oh, I know, but yeah. I'm just, and, and I mentioned that to you. No. I've gotten a couple more. I, I can tell you why. No. It's because someone down the line said that because we're changing from BBC to Waste Pro, that that's going to be an increase in oh, you're commercial. About yeah, that's, on the commercial, that's commercial only. The no, no, they've gotten the impression that it's their garbage the trade. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, no, we're not. But is there? There's not going to be no, any commercial increase either. I don't see that being an increase as well. That if you look at the bid, um, yeah. I think it was forty-seven two, um, and I think I sent in to you guys uh, all of the. Um, 
for the past year, what we've been billed. It was running about 48,000, 49,000, sometimes close to 50. Look at that warrant list. Look at yeah. That. Yeah. What's yeah. what's BCC on there for last month? Uh, it's 49,000. 49,000. Okay. And the bid came in at forty-seven two. So, so I mean, if it's going to, I guess, fluctuate from month to month, like it does. But one of the things they're they're getting some information that when the guy from BCC spoke, um, he said well, our bill would have been thirty-five thousand, but he would have awarded it to us. Thirty-five thousand wasn't anywhere in the bid. No. Of course, as you all saw. So they're. And it's also, not what they've been billing. No, the average no. bill has been forty-five thousand. Right. Yeah. And as as. Uh, City attorney said, if you look at the warrant list, the last one we got was yes, yeah. it was it's because people are there's people that just like to complain, as we know, that's human nature. No, but, no. Uh, but I think there's it's like playing the game of telephone. They hear the turn, they hear we had a vote on garbage, and all of a sudden, <laughs> as we saw the one citizen come up and talk about talking about our our garbage, not commercial garbage, now that people somehow have playing the telephone game things from talking about our garbage, which we've never even talked about. So I just think that that's probably what happened. That's a safe assumption. I have a question about the warrant list. Uh, on our insurance, uh, we have to pay it. It's 165000 Do we have to pay every six months or something like that? Which I mean, one is coming back? Which one is it? Aventress? Or yeah, okay. Aventress. Okay. Aventress, that's not the That's not the so we pay $165,000 a month. It fluctuates. That's okay. um, all the medical and uh, dental vision yeah. um, for all the employees. Okay. And to add to that, that's, we send that to a ventress who then sends that, those premium payments out to the various insurance companies. Okay. That's it. I got some. Oh, Commissioner Ward, anything from you, sir? Um, the only thing I had was uh, talking about the residential trash uh, service. We are the lowest in Bay County as far as the rates that we charge That's for right. residential trash. So, so that gives um, us room to raise it. Okay. <laughs> 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 well, I think it's um, because we've done some things, smart things in the past, because the city picks it up. We pick it up once a week and allow people to have two pickups or two trash cans and it helps to keep overhead costs down so i i think the city currently and in the past have done a great job at that and i know panama city beach they struggle with it because people have to get their own vendor you might have five six vendors um on secondary streets you might have 10 to 12 trucks come through there every week yeah. and that puts a lot of load on their infrastructure so i think that's one of the things we do really good in lynn haven right. yeah. yes callaway and Panama city beach are open source we you know you yeah. can choose your own person yeah lynn haven, i mean lynn haven you know Panama city does the same thing where they have their own in-house um lynn haven springfield used to they went and privatized it and it's been not good for them it was always better when you have your own staff and own sanitation department sanitation is actually the healthiest in a class plan. yeah and vicky just said it's actually you know, running in the black i guess right have we uh started tracking trash cans? tracking yeah so like oh, after hurricane michael for oh, example a bunch of people there if a house next to them got destroyed they just grab the trash can yeah we, we got over. that cleaned up yeah uh -huh. yeah we got that cleaned up and one of the things that our um our drivers will do if they see where one has it we tr we have a list of who has two cans who has okay. one can all right and so if they drive up and somebody has two cans they will get it okay yeah yeah some they're not real happy but right, uh, right. they will get it right. so if you want a second can well, ultimately it's not much a month anyways if you're three to five dollars right? please please i'm a i'm a penny pincher i try to I push my trash down to, to <laughs> say do one trash can but yeah. um I do have a question about when do we think we're going to start digging into the review and the codes and ordinances that we talked about? Let's finish it. So we slowed down because Ms. Judy wants us to slow down. We didn't want to be so overwhelming. Um, but no, we're going to start reviewing those probably in August. We're going to start bringing some. 
Okay. Um, for the for the ordinances and the codes, and it's for the comp plan. Or? No, this is just the big black book. Oh, right. Code work at the whole yeah, board. Yeah. It's both the whole board of ordinances, and so so to start um, to start reviewing those. So we we're talking about a, a strategy, whether it's digging that up between all of us. Mm -hmm. All of us going to look at a few and then coming back and bringing some to see what we need to to review. But in August we'll start looking at some of those. Okay. But wanted to get through the municipal. Mm -hmm. um, not this will, but the uh, maintenance maintenance code. When we get through that, uh, ULDC, we won't start looking at that until after we get through budget season. So it'll probably be around October, since we find out we don't have to have it completed by um, February. We just need to have that notice in. So that actually be around October when we start looking at the ULDC. And like we do with the property maintenance code, just taking our time going through that, having someone to come in and give us a little guidance. Mm -hmm initially so that we'll know what we're needing to be looking at as we're going through that. But in August, we'll start looking at some of those codes and ordinances um, to see where we go with that. Because some of it is also looking at what has actually been updated with that code or ordinance. Right, right. Because you might go on and it's like, well, this chapter actually goes to this and this section goes to this. So it's trying to track down and see if it's, even if it needs to be updated mm. or if it has already been updated. Right. It's something a little more relevant. Um, I guess, I did get some questions about chickens and roosters this week. Oh, so, yeah. so, um, I got a, I got a lot of and Vietnamese yeah, pot belly pigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so I, did, I did get some questions about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is funny when you like. I, I'm sure that's spurred from the post from Facebook in the city. Yeah, and people are like, wait, we have codes on this. Yes, read the codes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, please sir. read the codes in the city you live in. I have a question, um, and I, I have to disclose, my son is a contractor, okay, and so there were some issues with some of his customers, and he told them to call me. He told the customer to call me to complain about a regulation, and the regulation is the elevation certificate. That you have to have if there you know, are any improvements. So this little old lady who says she's on a fixed income mm -hmm. says that that's ridiculous because she's not changing the footprint of her house. And she's lived there since 1970. And she doesn't know why she has to pay to get an elevation certificate. Yeah. So, um, so I... And I, I I tried to read what that what what the the city says, but I didn't understand it. So Charles should really be the one who's talking on this, or Gloria, um, because they're the people that deal with the elevation certificates in the building department. But my understanding of it is that these are FEMA rules. Oh, I was just going to say uh, we are yeah. national. We don't have any choice in the matter. Um, if if a if a building um has been a lot of it came from you know all the flooding issues that we've had and the maps have changed now they know what elevations need to be because of storm surge and things are changing and so um if someone needs to put a building permit i believe that if it's over a certain i'm not sure i don't want to go into the detail but what they're being told is correct it's correct. Yeah. and really um commissioner it definitely changed because if we work with them probably a year on elevation and um, recognizing the people who were definitely not, maybe not in the flood zone, but their elevation was so low. And so after Hurricane Michael, uh, FEMA asked us to identify all of those residents, and we had to do that. And so now, it's, it's, um, I mean, it's, that is, that's coming. From and it affects it's, the CRS ratings. So if we point. weren't to do it, if we don't stick to these rules, mm -hmm. they'll kick us out of the program that we're in. And also, everybody in the city's insurance will go up. Oh. So yeah. if, but if you, I would recommend if you, for, for more information that you call Gloria, because Charles is out, but if you call Gloria in the building department, she's the one who deals with it every day, and she has all the regulations and all the information. It's just this little 80-year-old lady, it's hard. She knows she lives in a flood zone, and she's getting a new roof, and she doesn't see how getting a new roof affects her her elevation. <laughs> So I didn't have enough information in my head about the requirements to respond intelligently to her. It's something to do with 
the um, the value, the appraised value of the house and the cost of the improvements. There's some kind of percentage um, that triggers it. So um, Gloria would be happy to help you with that. But I know one thing is with that, we cannot wait, but... No. Yeah. Okay. We can't. There's nothing Mr. T yeah. can do. Yeah, I do know that. Speaking of contractor issues, I forgot we um, was it Thursday? When did we meet? Wednesday. Wednesday morning, we had the the first contractor examination board meeting okay, so. over at the Garden Club, and it was really just more of a you know the board was appointed. Obviously, they elected the chair and vice chair, but really just sort of talk about the scope of what they would do, um, and so what was decided. Uh, or recommended then is that um, between me and Charles, we would bring back the ordinance. It's it's right from the nineties, and it's truly a contractor examination board. Like they're going to come up with tests, they're going to administer administer the exams and do a certificate of competency, all that sort of stuff, which has been preempted by the state. Which Jamie would like to hear. It's another thing that's been preempted. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that now obviously, but most all occupations, you know, DBPR handles them, including all the different lines of, of contractors. But there were about 12 that are not regulated. And so um, this was like two years ago. They said, OK, we're, you're preempted. You've got about a year to phase it out. And so everybody was like, well, what about these 12? And it's like all this sort of marine work, screen porches, stuck. I mean, there's there's about 12 industries that a lot of cities and counties do license and regulate. Um, and we used to. I mean, we haven't done anything. In, since 2015, I don't think, but um, so the state basically punted another <clears throat> year. So you've got till July of 2024 before you're totally preempted and out of that business. And so part of the discussion we had was, I know we just started this group back up, but we're not going to be doing certificates of competency and licensing anybody. Um, so we need to take all that out of the ordinance. And so the game plan is to come back with a proposed ordinance and then Charles will have proposed form to take back to this committee and then they'll make a rec recommendation and we'll bring it back to you guys to actually adopt. But what that leaves us with is, yes, we're not going to do examinations and regulations, but it's going to be more of a complaint board. And so if you don't want it, you can always go straight to DVPR, complain against anybody who's who's licensed. But maybe you think going to Tallahassee is not going to really cut it for me or I'm not getting a response or whatever. You can file a complaint with this board. And that's really like, hey, I think my contractor's committed some sort of fraud. He's violating the building code on purpose. Um, this board can look at that, mm -hmm. hear it. And it does have some teeth because we can always say, all right, you can't pull another building permit. Mm -hmm. I can't take away your license. Well, you can't pull another building permit. Or in the city, just in city. Or, okay, if you are going to pull a building permit, here's four or five conditions. So, I mean, the board does have some teeth. It's got to be, it's almost like a code enforcement board, so to speak, but it's because uh, you got to give them a, you know, hearing and an opportunity. You our permitting process. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it's no. it's really for two things. One is to, to hear complaints, but that they, again, they've got to rise to the level of fraud or will, willful violations of, of building codes. And so some of that will come from, from owners complaining against their contractor. Some will come from Charles saying, hey, this guy keeps violating the building code. I've given him a notice of non-compliance, gave him 30 days to fix stuff. He's even ignored me. Then Charles can bring it to the board, and we can say, okay, no more building permits. Are all, all the cities agreeing to, to do this? this is just no, this is just for Lynn Haven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other cities, um, Pemo City Beach has a board like this. I'm not sure about the others. Um, but no, this is just, just Lynn Haven because we've already had that board. It just hasn't been active. Oh, so okay. it'll, it'll be able to hear complaints can stop people from pulling building permits. And if you actually get to that point and that board makes that decision, they're obligated by statute to turn that file over to DVPR. So your that DVPR complaint is still going to happen. Um, and then the other thing would be if Charles makes a decision that a contractor doesn't like, they would be able to hear that as sort of an appellate board instead of somebody coming straight to the commission because um, they disagreed with one of those decisions, they can come to that board and they can they can be the judge of, of those those decisions. So it'd be like an appellate board and a complaint board. 
Uh, and it's all contractors on the board? Yes. Yeah. So there's there's this one right. one from each trade and then one at large gotcha. or something like that. So you've got various expertise on there. Um, so, we, you know, even with the preemption, there's certainly enough left for that board to do, which I think when we, I think it was when Dan Russell was here, mm -hmm. right before was. he left, you it know, was. and then we had a yes. meeting over at the garden center yes. not too long ago last yeah. year. We discussed we just, it and, and yeah. he, he passed it. Yeah. So, so he just wanted, and it was really spurred again from Hurricane mm -hmm. Michael and so many yeah. residents mm -hmm. just dipped on uh, a lot of the things that were being do done mm -hmm. and we really, our hands were tied. Yeah. And so, um, he asked that we reinstate the board. Um, the commission agreed with that, and then last year we found we got that board back together. Mm -hmm. So that's something that that ordinance change will necessarily come up in the next month. I think we're going to meet again Did we have last week of August. See in our permitting process, because I just went through a little bit of a nightmare. I just switched contractors. Mm -hmm. I had pulled a permit, and then I switched contractors, and then I was having to pay the full permit, but then I was had a back and forth, and finally, I was told I had to pay half the permit fee again because I switched contractors. Other people have told me, you know, if you switch contractors, you're under a permit, you know, as long as you do the notice withdrawal and whatnot. But there was a there was a fee process, but mm -hmm. original I got the email where I had to pay the full permit again, and then I called about, it and then and I was told I could pay I could pay half the permit fee. So, I mean, I went through a little bit of a Hey, what's going on? So I didn't know if we had our permitting process laid out. Yep, so those did. those things are yeah. available for someone to see. So. Oh, absolutely. That okay. is that process. I think is absolutely on the under building department or permitting department online, and I'll okay. make sure. Okay, that. I just needed to. But um, anytime there's a problem, commissioner, I mean, you're a resident. You can still come uh, in to no, get. No, I was. I it got handled through Charles and <clears throat> and the, the office, but I just originally was told I was like, should not pay the whole permit over again. You know, because we've always permitted the the project, but you know, I could see paying. I could see the contractor having to pay something to come off. Mm -hmm. So it ended up being half the permit again, mm -hmm. but but you know, I didn't I didn't know where that was spelled out, and since I went through being billed full and then being told half, I'm like, what is the regular person go through? You know, but that's a that's an odd situation. Mm -hmm. You don't always. It, it is, and I think a lot of times residents don't understand when you change mm -hmm. contractors. You, you literally are kind of starting. You are kind of starting. Yeah. Because we're making yeah. we're making notes on the plan and whatnot. John. So, so it's one of those things where I understood, but it wasn't it wasn't really it wasn't really like hard hard line spelled out. Yeah. You know, in, in most municipalities, when you do this, you don't pay for a second plan review. Right. That's right. But when a contractor pulls his permit, the other contractors got to pay typically most places are full price okay you, you're paying for nothing and it, you know that contractor's just out or the owner's out for paying yeah. for that permit and that's 90 percent of municipalities are that way okay well so, i was i was prepared to pay whatever yeah but when i when i went back and said okay what do i gotta do then then it was then then it was came back and said okay you have to pay half the yeah so yeah we, we don't don't see a bunch of that because most people oh, I don't. don't. I know. Oh. Not everybody should cancer contract. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Um, should speaking of like the boards, you know, we have the CRA board, the financial review committee board, and all that stuff. I was thinking it might be a good idea to periodically bring it up in meetings. So that citizens know that those boards exist in case they want to get more involved because a lot of that stuff we depend on their input quite a bit you know one of the things we could do um and i thought about i was going to follow the city manager on it is actually assign commissioners to you know sort of be a liaison with particular boards just yeah as yeah. part of your report say hey this board met yeah yeah. So you know, some of you go to meetings, but sometimes you get stink out when you're at like a planning board meeting or something. But, yeah. 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 But, yeah, a lot of want to get a stink out. Yeah. Oh, I get. I'm, I'm used to stink out. That question came up during fin term. during finance review committee, and just so you, you guys all know, even as commissioners, you can sit sit 
Yeah. Well, I mean, as as commissioners, you can sit and attend, and you can have two or more of you sit and attend. Yes. You just can't yes. discuss with nope. each other nope. what nope. they're talking about, okay. right? So you can sit there like a fly on the wall sort of thing. And you used to see that all the time with big planning board meetings. You'd have the whole commission sitting on the back row, right? But, but keep your mouth to, shut and take <clears> notes. <throat> yep, yep, that's it. Just so you know, every board is noticed just like a commission meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's just part of the process. So every board is noticed, posted, um, put on Facebook. Uh, it's on the calendar, so it's treated just like we would a commission meeting. So mm -hmm. the citizens know about that. And of course, we have it in our newsletters um, and uh, on the back of the bill. So we try to make sure that our residents are well um, versed on new meetings happening. It has been my experience that when a citizen wants more engagement, they usually, they usually reach out and say, hey, is there another way I can get more involved, you know, with the city? Then I'll point them to the boards. Hey, go look at these boards. Let's see what vacancies are there. Or if there's not a vacancy, then just put your name on the list. And then as that takes out within the next year or so, then your application can be reviewed at that time. So there are citizens that do, you know, inquire about the various boards that we do have. And we just send them there and they get involved from that point. But um, so yeah, but so we'll divvy it up and allow some of us to you know, organize a little chart to see who's liaison for the particular different boards and like I said, just make that a part of our reports whenever we come back um, for that as well. So, Pat, when's the next uh, TPO meeting? August. Uh, I think it's like fifth. Yeah. It's, it's that first week of August. So Tuesday is third, right? Because Tuesday's our, first. Our, Right. Yeah, Tuesday's the first. Tuesday's the first. So it would be the it would be the Thursday the third, I believe it is. Okay. Um, is it always a certain time of the or, or the, the second or the second? It goes on a Wednesday at three thirty. Okay. Uh, um, and it's always the first can, Wednesday? Uh it, it's yeah, it's usually like every every three months on a on a Wednesday at three thirty. If they do the other meetings before. Okay. Because I, I don't know if I'm on the mailing list yet. Oh, you need to get all these lovely emails. Like yeah, I sent them all of your yeah. information. I hadn't gotten yeah. anything. Okay. Really? Yeah, I'll make sure because I that when that changed, I told them that you were replacing Commissioner Aldrich, and I sent them that information. Maybe because they haven't sent it out for me yet. Maybe when they send the information out the next week. Do, do they send information out periodically? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Because I hadn't received anything. Yeah, they had a they just had a public workshop on the on the thirteenth of July. I'll check on that for you, Commissioner. Anyway. Yeah, I did that. Because I would have liked the July. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see you all Tuesday at four thirty. Join the workshop at four thirty, followed by our. Uh, commission meeting after that. That's the cocktail hour, 4.30. <laughs> Depends on where you go. Or tea time. <laughs> Depends on where you go. May need some after this stormwater workshop. Right. <laughs> Meeting adjourned.